Hey gamers, it's time for a how to solo video and today I'm going to be showing you how to solo Rococo. All right, so I've got us all set up for a solo game of Rococo versus Madame du Berry, who is a AI player who's going to give us a really hard time in this game. This is a how to solo, so I'm going to give you a walk through the rules and a couple of sample turns so that you can see how it all works. I think what I may do actually is play a sample round against Madame du Berry so that that way we get to see like a little change between rounds and then you'll pretty much know how to play. Just it'll take some tries to get the most points, which is of course the fun part. So I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the board, which I've already set up. Basically the goal of the game is to get the most prestige and you get the most prestige by making and renting out the best outfits at the King's Ball and also funding as many of the monuments as possible so that you also get some credit for that. So our prestige is marked around the edges of the board. And most of the board is dedicated to the ball and like the hallways. So what these are are spaces where we're gonna put dresses in order to do a little bit of area control. So you get a bonus for being the first to have a presence in all of the halls. Uh, you get a bonus for being the majority in each hall at the end of the game. And then also at the very, very end, there's a fireworks show where you can move some of your dresses from this main hall up to the top if you have also funded some of these spaces. You can also see where there are things you can fund around the board, such as musicians, statues, fireworks show, and some kitchen workers. So you can put one of your influence tokens in each side of the kitchen. And if you do that, it helps with your income on future turns. So this side gives you credit for each monument that you've built. And then this side gives you extra money for each dress that you've put out on in the hallways. So this is mostly where you're gonna put your dresses, frock coats and influence tokens throughout the game. Down here we have employees, and this is where we have a row of people that we can hire for the game. Your employees are a really important part. We're going to get to that when we start to play. But these guys are both people that you can hire and a timer. So when you run out of employees in the employee deck, you know the game is over. This is the Queen's Favor token. When you get the Queen's Favor, you get to be first player and you also get a little money. At the very end of the game, you get some influence. And then over here we have outfits and materials to make them. So. These drawers here allow you to get bolts of silk, or if you don't want the silk, you can get some thread or some lace. And all of those things could be needed to pay the resource costs to make a dress or coat down here. So these are the dresses and coats on offer. These are the resources to make them that are currently on offer. And then we have our individual player areas that look quite ornate, but they're actually super informative and helpful. And they make a nice visual aid to help us as we go on with the game. Here on the left, we have our own setup. So I've just got my employees sitting face up. You don't actually draw off of your deck in this game. You choose the employees you want to use. So I've just got it face up because it's just me. And then this deck over here is Madame du Berry. She's got like a AI deck that's got several cards in it. You also put her starter employee cards and anybody she hires in another pile over here. Both of us start with one piece of lace and one thread but I'm gonna start with 15 livres and she is not gonna get any money because Madame du Berry transcends the need for money, which we will continue to notice to our great detriment throughout the game. So before we get started, I thought it might actually be nice to go on a little tour of one of these little player boards because they actually tell you exactly what needs to happen in a full round of this game. They're great because they actually lead you through everything and have got little illustrations that will, will help. So let's go ahead and put this here and zoom in. All right, so all phases are actually represented on this little player board and everybody gets one. It's super nice. So we have four phases in each round of play and they're numbered here, one, two, three, four. In phase one, you are gonna prepare for a new round and these symbols tell you the things that you need to do to prepare for a new round. Here we start with the queen's favor. So basically what happens is if somebody acquired the queen's favor in the previous round, they return the token to the board so that somebody can acquire it next turn and they take the gold thimble to mark them as the star player for this upcoming round. Next, you do new employee cards. So any employee cards that are unhired and left on the board are removed. So you only get one round, one chance to buy everything. And then you're gonna repopulate the market for employees with new employees off of the deck. And don't forget, these are your timer. So you will automatically run through all the employees, hire who you can. 
Then you're gonna do new resource tiles. So we are actually gonna do a changeover between rounds so you can see this work. But essentially you leave all the resource tiles in place as they were from the previous round. And then you fill in empty spaces with resource tiles from the draw bag. So there are really lovely little velvety draw bags for this game that you use to hold stuff that's not out on the board already. And then last, you redo your dress market. So while with the resources, you fill in any gaps and you just fill in the holes, uh, with the garment tiles, what happens is that the market's gonna cycle a little bit. So the dresses or frock coats that are in the two rightmost spaces will just drop off and be removed from play. All of the other remaining garments get shifted all the way over to the right as far as possible. And then any spaces that are empty, you refill from the draw bag. And again, I'm gonna demonstrate this for you. Um, I'm gonna do one full round and then show you between rounds so you can get a look. So all that upkeep is phase one and it's all here so you don't forget to do things in your game. Next you have phase two and phase two is select three employee cards. So you heard me right, I said select. So in Rococo, you have a deck of employee cards and you're gonna add to it by hiring new employees. However, instead of drawing randomly and you don't know who you're gonna get, you actually get to choose employee cards from your deck to play. However, after you've played them, they go to your discard pile and they are no longer available until you've cycled through your entire employee deck. So a lot of the game is deciding who to hire and who to depute, which is an action we're gonna discuss shortly. So you select three employee cards for the round, although you may end up with more actions. A lot of the employees have bonus actions, or if you hire a new employee during the round, you actually get to use them that very round. So you can use a master to hire an employee and then play that employee in the same round that you hired them. Then you get to phase three, and that's do actions. So each of these symbols is an action that you can do. And let's just do them from left to right. On the left, the leftmost action is acquire resources. Any of your employees can do this, and basically you're taking resources from the drawers over here. So if the drawer is full, you pay two livre to take whichever one tile you want. If there are two resources left in the drawer, you pay one livre. And anything that's left alone in the drawer when you perform the resource action is free if you decide to take it. But you only get to take one thing, so choose wisely. So this is acquire resources. This next one is fund a decoration. So any of the decorations around the board, you can send one of your employees and the requisite amount of money to fund it. So you can fund a musician, you can fund a statue, you can fund a firework, or you can fund the kitchen. All of which will do something good for you throughout the game. This symbol stands for deputing an employee. So sometimes you're gonna to wanna to thin your deck a little bit. You've been picking up a lot of employees and maybe they don't all get the same mileage for you that you would like. So what you do then is depute. When you depute, you basically trash one of your employee cards, you get the amount of money in the bottom left corner, and you get to do their bonus action it's here in the middle of the card just one last time before they go. As you can see, there are thimbles next to these, and that's because it's showing you which employees cannot do those actions. So any employee can do any of these first three actions, but there are more limitations on these over here. So looking at our opening hand, you can see there are gold thimbles, silver ones, and bronze. These are masters, journeymen, and apprentices. So masters can do anything, journeymen can do most things, and apprentices have a little bit more limited set of actions, and we're gonna talk about that. So here we have create a garment. Apprentices can never do that. Only journeymen and masters are allowed to make dresses. So to make a dress, you pay the resource cost to make that dress, and then we're gonna talk about what can happen to those dresses when we actually play one. However, what's interesting is that while apprentices can never ever make a dress or a frock coat, sometimes a garment is so complex that only a master can be trusted to create it. So for example, here we have a frock coat with a gold thimble at the top of the piece. That means that a master has to be the one to make this garment. So journeymen can make most garments, but there are some that are masters only as denoted by the gold thimble. Then once you make the garments, you can either sell it and just get rid of it for the amount on the bottom left, which is 25 livre in this case, which is a lot of money. Or you can put it out in the halls for the prestige points, so you place it in one of these spots, get the bonus, and announce your presence in one of the hallways. This gold thimble, of course, means that only a master created garment can go here, and this one is more of a free-for-all. Here we have another task that no apprentice can do. Only a master or journeyman can go and court the queen's favor. So if you do this action, you get to take a queen's favor token. 
uh, that makes you the first player for next round, you get five Libra, and that's the turn. If somebody else has already done this on a specific round, you cannot do it yourself, so this is a one-time thing per round. And then here we have our only master only activity, which is hiring another employee. So an apprentice and a journeyman, their positions are both too junior to hire another employee. So you have to send your masters to do that. But hiring a new employee basically means that you choose one of the employee cards that's in the market, you pay the money to hire them, and then you put them directly into your hand. One thing to know, however, is that employees get less expensive as the round goes on and other people get employees, but at the same time, that would mean that you don't get your first pick. So the first person to hire an employee on a round pays five livre. The second person to hire an employee pays three, then one, and then that fourth employee who's left on the employee market is free, but it's also the one that nobody chose. So don't just take an employee to take one, make sure that they're doing something for you and for your game strategy. So once you've played all of your cards, you have taken all of your actions, and then you go into phase four of the round. So phase four of the round is collect income, and your income is super stingy in this game. Your base income is only five and you need to do something to augment that or you're never gonna get anything done. So there are a couple ways to get more income. One, as we've mentioned before, is to sell dresses that you make, but you don't wanna sell every dress you make because you also need to get them out into the halls to represent you and your brand and get you some prestige. The other thing that you can do is fund kitchen decorations. So you can put one of your influence tokens in each half of the kitchen. This half rewards you for having lots of monuments at income time, and then this half rewards you for having lots of garments out at income time. So this one gives you one extra money per decoration. This one gives you one extra money per garment. So if you wanna make some extra money, you need to get your butt in here and get going with that. And then you're gonna go back to phase one and go through the whole thing again, which is something that I'm about to show you how to do. All right, so what I intend to do is play one sample round and then show you what happens between rounds so you get a sense of how this game works and then you can go enjoy it on your own because this is a really great game. Madame de Berry is mostly set up here, but what we are gonna do is draw her opening hand. We're gonna move her little markers over to make room for her cards. So I'm gonna walk you through how her turns work in conjunction with my turns. So what's gonna happen is we are in phase one except that nothing in phase one happens because we're already set up. So now we're gonna move on to phase two and that's choose employees. So I'm gonna choose some employees. So I'm gonna choose three of these cards. Let me think about what I wanna do. I definitely wanna master because I'm gonna to wanna to hire someone. And then what do I want? These have different bonus actions that can be really nice. So this journeyman lets you pay one coin in order to get either a lace or a thread, not bad. This apprentice allows you to take a bonus action of grabbing an additional resource, which is very nice. And then this apprentice gives you an extra two livre, which is also quite nice. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apprentice for sure. And then I may actually take my other apprentice because I don't actually need to buy any of this stuff. And I wanna do fairly basic actions this particular round. I'm hoping to maybe get a dress out next round. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my journeyman uh, I might try to get a dress out on a future round if I was just playing by myself, but since this is an example round, I wanna make sure I have the full range of actions available to me, so we'll take the journeyman. These go back in our deck. They will certainly be played next round along with a third card from discard. If we hire an employee, there will be another card in the mix from that discard pile, but we'll get there. But I've chosen my cards for this round. This is what I'm doing. I'm gonna flip these two over to kind of prevent visual confusion. Then over here for Madame du Berry, she is going to get a hand of cards from her deck that has her pompous face on the back of it. So each round you shuffle all 25 of her cards during prep, which we've already done, so that's her phase one. And then we're gonna select employee cards for her, for her phase two. So basically what you do is instead of selecting three cards, you just draw four for Madame du Berry. So she just gets four cards and we don't know what they are. We're gonna find out one at a time what, what nasty thing she has in store for us. But that's all you gotta do to select her employee cards. It's very simple. And then we're already in phase three and that is perform actions. Ooh, I love to perform actions. So does Madame du Berry, unfortunately. And she has the golden thimble, which makes her first player. So we're gonna walk through one of her turns and then we're gonna take a turn. Our good friend, Madame du Berry, is going to flip a card. And what we have here is a symbol that tells us that she's gonna take a resource. So moving it up close, if you look at the symbol up top, you see that she's gonna take a resource 
And you can also look right beneath it to see she's going to take the middle one from each drawer. Over here on the left, when you are placing a dress, you draw a card from her deck to show where. So this will tell us what hall. And then this has to do with the jewelry expansion, which I'm not playing with for this tutorial. So Madame du Berry is going to take her resources. And she's going to take the middle one from each drawer. She doesn't do anything with them, but for every two resources she has at the end of the game, she just gets a point. So this is a way she can snake us and get a whole bunch of extra prestige. Also important to note is that if Madame du Berry can't take an action, she just gets three prestige points, and that is illustrated on the card uh, as a reminder. So she's taken her turn. Now we get to take our turn. What are we going to do? So I think the first thing I want to do is get another employee because I don't want Madame du Berry to have the pick of all employees. So let's look at what's actually on the market. I think I probably just want another master because they're good, but you know, it's worth looking. It's worth looking. Here we have a journeyman that gets you an extra resource as a bonus action. Here we have a journeyman who lets you pay one coin to draw a random resource from the resource bag. Here we have a bonus action that lets you depute any employee from your staff and then get their bonus action one more time. So you can depute someone as a bonus action instead of taking that as your main action, which is pretty cool. And then this master just gives you one coin, but honestly, that can be pretty nice sometimes. I'm actually pretty tempted by the journeyman because more resources are always really good, but ooh, a master is always so useful. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hire the master, even though I'm not sure that's the right choice. And in some games I might actually choose a journeyman that has more bonus actions for just better tempo. That's what we'll do this time. So we're gonna play this master and we're gonna pay five coins because we are the first people to hire from this set. So if there's already an employee missing, we would pay less, but we want first pick of the lot. And so we are gonna pay and take this master. So this master goes right back into my hand, which means I get an additional action this turn because I hired someone, which is really cool. So instead of going into discard, an employee you hire goes into your hand. When Madame du Berry hires an employee, she actually gets an extra card from her deck and gets an extra action to mimic that happening for her. Speaking of Madame du Berry, hmm, we will let her flip over another card and she is going to make a dress. So when Madame du Berry tailors a garment, she actually does not have to pay anything. She doesn't have to pay any resources. She doesn't have to do anything. She just gets to make the dress. So what this card is gonna tell us is that she's gonna create the second dress from the right. So she's gonna tailor this one. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna decide where she's going to put it. Madame du Berry has no need for money. So she will never sell the dress. She's always gonna place it somewhere out on the board. So it gives her a lot of advantages over you because you're gonna scramble for cash sometimes and she's not but you will pull a card from the deck to determine where she places it. So in this case down here, you can see that she's gonna put it up in the Royal Hall. And so that is where we're gonna place the dress. We just put this card in discard. So then we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna put it in the Royal Hall and you put it in the most high value spot, basically. If a master space is available, she'll choose one. There are two of equivalent value. So we'll put the dress here. And then to mark that it is Madame du Berry's, we are going to put one of her influence tokens on the dress. So she's already got a dress out, unfortunately, for us. But that was her turn. It's back to us, and we do have three cards to work with, so that's pretty nice. So now that she's on the dress run, we need to think about what we want to do. Do we want to tailor a dress? In which case, we need to think about a couple of things. We need to think about what resources it, it will take to make the dress. We also need to think about the cost in livre of the dress, because on this market, if you look at the board, there are descending costs here. So the two dresses to the right are always free, and then you have to pay a bit to tailor the dresses and coats that are further up the line. So what do we want to do? What do we want to make? What can we get? So I'm thinking that what I might actually attempt to do, and hope that Madame du Berry doesn't mess me up, is try to make this frock coat that is pink that's furthest to the right because I won't have to pay any money to do it and I can get enough resources to do it right now. I have a lace already because I got that at the start and I have an apprentice who I can send to get a resource and then my apprentice will also grab another resource which is pretty great. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play my apprentice and because there is one resource missing from all these drawers I only have to pay one livre. So here's a 10 that I'm going to break down. So I've taken that action. I'm going to take these two bolts of pink silk. 
So when you take a resource tile, you have a choice. I want the silk, but I actually could choose instead to take a thread, but it's an either or proposition. So I'm gonna keep this little tile for the bolts of silk on the top, but I could also discard it and take a thread as represented by the thread symbol on the bottom. You do have to choose, so know what you want when you grab the tile. So this is gonna represent some pink silk that I have. And then this apprentice actually has a bonus action that lets me take resources again. So what that allows me to do is perform one extra acquire resources action. So I'm gonna go ahead and just acquire this. This was the last resource in the drawer and the drawer is empty. So this is the third bolt of pink silk that I need. I'm gonna take it. So now I've actually got everything that I need to tailor this garment over here if Madame du Berry doesn't steal it right from under me. So that was my action. And because I had a nice bonus action, I got to do a lot on this turn. So you wanna really pay attention to that because it really matters. All right, so now we're back to Madame du Berry. She is once again gonna take resources. However, as the card is showing us, she wants to take all three bolts of silk or resources from the left drawer. Unfortunately, that drawer is empty. So what's gonna happen instead is if she can't perform the action, she's gonna take three prestige points instead. So that monster, Madame du Berry, is gonna get three prestige points up here. One, two, three. so that was her action. However, fortunately she did not tailor a garment because that's what I wanna do. I wanna tailor a garment. So I'm gonna use my master to tailor this frock coat that I really wanted to make and I saved up all these resources and I'm finally gonna do it, yes. So we are gonna play the master to tailor a garment. And that's good because this garment actually requires a master to do the tailoring. This yellow, well, this golden thimble up top is a signal that only a master can make this garment. It cost me zero because it says zero right here. So I'm doing it for free other than for the resources. So here are my three bolts of pink silk. Here is my one lace. And so all these things go away and I have got my resources paid. Now I've made this beautiful pink frock coat, super fashionable. And what I need to do now is decide what to do. Am I gonna sell it for 23 livres down here on the left? Because that's a lot of money and I could really use the money, oh my God. However, at the same time, it's also four prestige points and Madame du Berry's already got a dress out. What am I gonna do? So I think this time what I am in fact gonna do is I'm gonna put, the, I'm gonna put this dress out. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rent it out. I just refuse to lose tempo here. So I'm gonna put it here. This is a golden thimble again, so only a master made garment. Whether it required one or not, if a master card was used to make the garment, then it can go in one of these spaces. So I'm gonna put it here. It's got a five lever bonus, so at least I get a little money. I'm gonna flip it. And I'm gonna put one of my influence tokens here. And I'm gonna get five leave her for that bonus spot. So that's something. And so now Madame du Berry is gonna go again. This time she's gonna hire an employee and she's gonna hire the first one from the right because it's got the little right hand side and a one. So oof, if I had not hired that master that I wanted, she would have got it this turn. So instead she's gonna take this employee who is now the new first one on the right. And this journeyman will now go away into Madame du Berry's deck and then what happens now is that we are going to get one more card for her to represent the fact she hired someone. So you hire someone, they go into your hand, that happens for her too. And then now we're back to me and I've got one more journeyman to do something with. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna spend some money, I think. I want to fund a decoration. So I wanna fund in the kitchens while it's still cheap. And the question is, do I wanna start with decoration funding or do I wanna do dress funding? Either way right now, it's the same amount of money because if I fund a decoration here, I'll get one extra income. And if I fund dresses, I'll get one extra income because I have one dress out. So what do I think I'm gonna do more? So depending on the kind of game you wanna play, you wanna make sure that you kind of hit where you need to hit. If you're gonna go heavy on decorations, start here. If you're gonna go heavy on dresses, start here. Let's say that I'm gonna go super dress heavy. So I'm gonna use my journeyman to pay nine livre, which is leaving me broke. But I get to put one of my tokens here in the kitchens. And now what that means is that uh, at income, I'm gonna get an extra income per dress I've managed to put out on the board. It's gonna incentivize more dressmaking for me. I also have the choice to pay one livre to get one lace or thread. I am gonna do it even though I'm broke. 
I'm going to get my lace back because having that was very convenient earlier. So that's it. I'm out of cards, but Madame de Berry has one more up her sleeve. So what is she going to do? So what is she going to do? Madame de Berry is going to fund a decoration. So the way this works is that we know that Madame de Berry is going to fund a decoration and she gets to do it for free because money is no object to her. So underneath here we have musicians. So that's how we know what she would like to fund. So there's going to be symbols that tell you if she wants to fund the fireworks, the kitchen, the musicians, or the statues. These are the musicians. So knowing that she wishes to fund the musicians, we're going to put one of her trademark tokens on the least expensive musician available. So we have four musicians here. We have eight, nine, 13, and 17. So here on this little eight lever musician, she's going to put one of her tokens. So she's taking the cheapest musician decoration opportunity away from us. She also now has presence in two of the halls. And if she's the first to get an influence token in every single one of these halls, she's going to get a bonus. And I want to talk about that for a second because those bonuses are up here. So, you know, all the halls, you get six prestige points if you're the first one there. There's a spot for second place, but in a two-player game, which like this is more or less a two-player game, if Madame du Berry gets here first, there are no points for me for getting into all the halls. So if I'm going to get that bonus at all, I have to beat her to it. So this is going to discard, and that was all of Madame du Berry's turn, and all of my cards are gone. So we finished phase three of the round, and now we're going to go into phase four. Madame du Berry doesn't do anything in this round because she doesn't need money, so she's just going to hang out. I'm going to get income, and my income is five plus any of my kitchen bonuses. So for right now, I'm going to get five lever just because. And then I get one additional because I have a bonus that gives me one more money per dress. So I only have one dress, so it's only one income. Hopefully it's going to grow a lot over the future theoretical rounds that we play. So now that income is done, I'm actually going to go through phase one now because you didn't get to see a real phase one when the game was set up and then this playthrough will be done. And it'll hopefully give you a sense of how exciting this game can really be, just obsessing about which employees you want, what to do, everything. It's just, oh, I love it. In my new apartment, I'm gonna have uh, Google Fiber, and if it works as well as I'm hoping it will, I might be able to do things like stream games, and this would be high on the list for me. But we'll see, it's theoretical at this time. All right, so now we are in the next round. The first thing you're gonna do is handle the queen's favor. No one took it. If somebody had had this token, you would return it to the board, but it was already there, so it just hangs out. And because I did not take the queen's favor, Madame du Berry was first player last round, and she's just gonna keep the golden thimble for this round. So that takes care of that first part. Next, we're gonna handle the employee cards. So these ones that are left, they disappear, they're gone. We discard those, and then we're gonna lay out a new market. So kind of a fun thing about the employees is they are in levels. So here are our level one employees, but we've started to see level twos. They go up through level six, and basically there's seven rounds in a game of Rococo. Now that we're in round two, we're seeing for the first time round two cards. So the highest number that you can see at any time, except for the very last round, is the round you're actually in, which is cool. So now we're in round two, we're set up with our employees, new people to hire, new opportunities for everyone. Then we're going to handle our resources. So our resources are depleted. So we're going to get our resource bag. It's very lovely. And then we're going to put out new resources in all of these empty spots. And now that is all set. So that's the resources handled. And the next thing to handle is the garments. So if there were garments left here, uh, we would actually drop them off now. There's actually a handy arrow to tell you that because Ian O'Toole did this graphic design and he's really good at giving you visual cues about what you're supposed to do. Thanks, dude. So, uh, but we're actually going to slide all of them down since we didn't need to remove any. Gosh, I would love it if some orange silk showed up. And then we're going to come here and we're going to pull two garments out of the bag. So there's one. And here's our other. So we're showing these lovely orange frock coats, but there's no orange bolts of silk. Oh, 
So that's the problem for another time since this is a sample round. So that's all fine and dandy. We've done all of the things at the top of our little player mats. And then there's one more thing you do for Madame de Berry. So instead of just continuing to draw off her deck, you take all of her discard, you put it back on her deck and you shuffle everything. You always shuffle all of her cards before the start of a new round just to kind of keep her random so you can't card count or like eliminate what she might be able to do or not or any of that. So now Madame de Berry is ready to go. We would select our employees and play a new round. And just one other thing since we can talk about it. During employee selection, I've only got two cards and you select three employees. So these would have to go into my hand and then my discard comes over here. I would get to choose one of these employees for this round and then the other three would be my guaranteed hand for the round to come. So you have to cycle through your entire deck of employees, but you get some choice about who comes up when. And that is Rococo. This is a game I really enjoy. I'm actually really glad I got this filmed because I'm planning to pack this up and take it to game night tomorrow night to beg my friends to play it with me. So uh, I hope that you now feel confident to play it yourself, solo or with others. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and most of all, happy gaming.